As we boarded our flight to Poland, we all put our current lives aside and dedicated the next 10 days to the learning of our culture and the history of our people. We were ready for all the emotional truths we would encounter. As soon as we arrived in Warsaw, we boarded the bus we would call home for a week and headed to the Warsaw Jewish Cemetery. We got to see the tombs of many famous and influential Jews. The ethereal beauty of the cemetery complemented our first hours in Poland so well. We were shown the mausoleums of great rabbis and said Kaddish to honor them. Even as our first stop, the cemetery already brought us closer to each other and with our heritage. Okay. This over here behind me isn't a grave, otherwise I wouldn't be standing on it. It's a memorial. It's a memorial to fighters, you can see fighters in the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising, but a specific group of fighters. These were fighters that belonged to something called the Jewish Bund. Esther Rochel Kavinska wasn't a rabbi, she wasn't a visionary. She was the founder of Yiddish theater in Poland. This over here is a monument, more than a grave, to three Yiddish writers. The two that interest us are the top one and the bottom one. The top one's name is Yud Lamed Peretz, Yudale Peretz. And the bottom one is a chap by the name of Shin Ansky. His name wasn't Shin Ansky. His name actually was Shloimi Rappaport. My name is Shloimi Rappaport. I might change it to Shin Ansky as well, but I'll leave that hanging. Our next stop was to the Warsaw Ghetto area. After learning about the ghettos for years, we finally got to visit where the ghettos used to be. It only made the history more real and helped us get an idea of how many people were forced into a minute amount of space. Next was a national monument at the infamous Umschlagplatz. The Mila 18 Memorial for the Jewish Resistance and Rappaport Monument were our last stops in our first day in Poland. We were all amazed by the many memorials and monuments that were erected in Warsaw. On our second day, we headed from Bialystok to the centuries-old synagogue in Tikoshin, and became the first group in the shul to sing Zmirot in a very long time. From Tikoshin, we drove to Lupeshau. We entered the most beautiful forest that any of us has ever been in, only to discover that on this very ground, 2,000 Jews were executed by the Nazis. We were astonished that such a breathtaking forest could hold such a grim and sickening past. To honor the men, women, and children, we placed dirt and pebbles from the Holy Land, Israel, on the memorial. Now we were on our way to the Treblinka extermination camp, or at least where it once stood. A suitable memorial was built in its place, with concrete blocks symbolizing the path to Treblinka countless boulders, and a granite tower. It was our first visit to the site of a camp and any personal grief.
fir trees grow there, and a regular signboard saying, The very next morning, we visited the Hotel Ilan, the former site of the Yeshiva Chochmei Lublin, and read from the Torah just like any Thursday morning. except any positive feelings were immediately dropped once we arrived at Maidanik, the first intact death camp that we were to visit on our trip. As we walked along a fixed path, we could not imagine what we would see next. We'd been taught about death camps for many years, but to actually see the barracks and gas chambers was unreal. When we entered the gas chambers, we learned that the prisoners were tricked into entering the disinfection buildings upon arrival. As disinfecting was a common practice, but once they entered, they would never come out. All that was left were the blue stains from the Zyklon B. We got to see where the prisoners would sleep, and worse, the monument that was built containing the ashes of cremated victims, with the crematorium and its ovens right beside it. At the former site of the Belzec extermination camp, we walked through a memorial commemorating the 500,000 victims and the seven Jews who survived. It was alarming to hear of an extermination camp that was relatively unknown because of the small amount of survivors. To finish off the night, we entered the Jewish cemetery in Lezhensk and traveled to the Markova farm where the Ulma family was hiding two Jewish families. What was their crime? Their capital crime was showing chesed, was showing some human loving kindness and protecting other people, and they were done to death. And for me to visit... Unfortunately, they did not survive. As the sun set, we contemplated all that we experienced in 24 hours, and hoped for the comfort in the very next day's Erev Shabbat. On Friday morning, we came to Tarnow to see the former site of a once great synagogue. We sang Zmirot and read personal Shabbat letters from our families. As we regained our positive attitudes, we made a complete reversal when arriving at the site of a mass grave at Spilatowska Gora, where 800 children were murdered. After hearing their stories, we were urged to contact our parents by text or email and tell them how much we missed them. The roller coaster of emotion did not end there as we walked through Krakow's merry Jewish quarters. the Rima Cemetery, and then to the beautiful Krakow Square. We marveled at the European architecture, entered the market, and even bought some trinkets and souvenirs. 
After a spiritual and eye-opening Shabbat, we made our way to the house of Amon Goth, an SS captain and commandant of the Krakow Plaschow concentration camp. We went down to his basement and set up Dala where he abused his Jewish maids. On Sunday morning, we took a trip to the Auschwitz One Museum. We learned even more than we could imagine, and took in everything that was on display. I can honestly say that it was the best museum that I have ever been to. When it was finally time to go to the infamous Auschwitz-Birkenau, we braced ourselves for the apex of our trip. As we walked down the Judenrampe, the children of former prisoners recited a blessing. Amen. Amen. Almost everything in the camp was intact. The barracks, Posts, walls, and memories are still very fresh. On our last day in Poland, we visited many places like the Lodz Jewish Cemetery, the Radagast train station, Part of the Lodge Ghetto, the Chelmno Estate, and finally, the site where the Chamna extermination camp once stood. Yehudi, 
The memory of singing Hatikva in Chelmno carried with us to the Kotel the very next day. On our second day in Israel, we toured the city of David and its tunnels. Then we danced at the Yom Yerushalayim Parade to conclude our wonderful trip before flying home early the next morning.